What did I just watch? You guys have to see this. So this random WNBA player is saying that reality is coming for Caitlin Clark and the other college stars that are entering the WNBA next year. <laughs> Let's see the clip. I mean, Camilla's coming, Caitlin's coming. There's more than just that that are coming. What will the league have in store for them when they get there? Look, SVP, um, <laughs> reality is coming. Okay. <laughs> you know, there's, there's levels to this thing. Oh, there's levels to this? Here's the amount of people that go to WNBA games. Seems a little different than this. Hold on, let me pull up some Deanna Terracy highlights real quick. Came off just at the right time. Cash into right. I'm sure Caitlin is shaking in her boots watching you make layups. That wasn't just a random clip either. That was from her top 10 plays of her entire career. Shall I pull up Caitlin's top 10 plays? It's around. Evades Van Lith. And so sick before that UCLA game. That's how sick she was. Clark Oh wait, those were our highlights from one game. But there's levels to this. Thing that kind of sort of inflames this even more is that we see that the criticism is often very one-sided. Caitlin Clark talks her shit. Caitlin Clark is demonstrative. Caitlin Clark, you know, and 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 in this way, I do compare it. Uh, in many ways, I compare it to Steph, but also in this way as well is that Steph Curry is, and you know, Steph Curry has a lot of flair and flamboyance to his game. Like he can get into it you know with people and he's got the shimmy and all that but people aren't bothered by that uh caitlin clark is the same way it's like people aren't by bothered by it because they're caught up in the narrative of oh here's this you know wonderful uh, kin a kind soul from the great state of iowa representing middle america so they put all these sort of we pro what happens in these sports race wars is everybody projects their own shit on the people coming if you're going to break a record to me if it's legitimate, you have to break that record in the same amount of time that that player set it. Okay. Right? So if, if Kelsey Plum set that record in four years, mm -hmm. well, Caitlin should have broke that record in four years. But because there's a COVID year, and then there's another year, you know what I mean? So she's already had an extra year to break that record. So is it truly a broken record? You think you think exactly how I. I don't think. And, and, and the sad part is that record would never be broken because no one. There will never be another COVID year. Okay, but before I get before I get to that post, um, I, so let me just say this: I am not a person who will sit down and watch sports. Okay, I used to be when I was younger. I used to be very into watching basketball, watching football, watching all the sports. I'm not really into that anymore. But um, you know, scrolling through social media. I don't, I, it, it literally urged me to try to figure out who Caitlin Clark was, okay? But based off of me just going on Instagram or TikTok or wherever it is that I was on and constantly seeing this person, you know, constantly on my feed, I had to go on the internet and say, okay, who is this person? Let me, let me do a little research behind this person because I'm seeing a lot of backlash. I'm seeing a lot of women come forward and talk, talk about her. I'm seeing a lot of criticism, but I'm constantly seeing this girl's name. And also I just saw that she signed, um, I believe it was like a $20 million contract with Nike. So I said, okay, let me go on the internet and look this girl up and find out who she is. Let me tell you something, okay? Like I said before, I am not somebody who will sit down and watch sports right now, but I can guarantee that I watched a lot of different highlights from this one person, Caitlin Clark, and that girl could ball, okay? Let, let's just keep it real. She is a good ball player. She does things that, you know, you would assume that she would be more advanced in her career, not being a college player who's just now getting drafted into the WNBA. Like, you would think that she was somebody who has been, you know, won some championships ch championships for the WNBA. I mean, based off of, you know, how far it is that she can be to shoot and make the goal. Like, just based off of her, her strategy within playing the game, right? And when I went through social media and I saw how many women were tearing this woman down, how many women were speaking out against what it is that she's doing, it just, you know, proved to me something that I always say is that a lot of women are never satisfied. Just keeping it extremely real with you guys. 
There are a lot of women who are never satisfied. And I'll even go further to say that there are, uh, are um, it, this proves that whole sisterhood and feminist narrative that if you don't fit a cookie cutter image of what they feel that you're supposed to look like, what they feel your, your personality is supposed to be like, you know, then they want to uh, criticize you or ostracize you. What I think is very interesting is that, you know, a lot of times, especially on, on the media and on the Internet, I hear so many women who complain about the fact that in women's sports, they do not uh, receive the same amount of funds that the NBA, for example, with, with basketball for, uh, you know, that the NBA players receive, you know, that the, the male basketball players, they will get, you know, all types of uh, way more money and endorsements, way more money, um, you know, for the season and all that kind of stuff. But wouldn't that mean that you would need to, uh, you know, somebody to be at the forefront to create the, uh, you know, the hype and the highlight around the games to encourage more people to want to endorse that sport? That's what that would mean to me. Like you would need certain doors to be opened so that people would understand whether it is um, uh, endorsement deals or whatever for all these p people to find the value in this place. I included this video for a reason. You know, for example, you have one of the hottest rappers, Travis Scott, at a basketball at a basketball game with Caitlin Clark, right? And the two of them are posing to take pictures. And what does Caitlin Clark do? She turns around for her other team and says, "Hey guys, come on over." I thought that that was such a great representation of what it is that she's actually doing within the sport. Like, hey, I'm going first, but don't think that I'm forgetting about everybody else. Y'all are all supposed to come too. I'm doing this for all of us. I'm at the forefront. I'm focused on my game. I'm doing whatever it is that I have to do, but it's going to benefit the entire. And a lot of women are very upset. I, I, listen, I thought it was so interesting. That you have somebody who's coming out talking about, oh, you know, how come it is when we have, you know, certain basketball players that look different, that are, you know, black or whatever, and, and these females, they don't get, how come it's that them who does this? Oh, you know, well, she's, she can, uh you know, say certain things in, during the game. She can have an attitude. How come nobody looks at it like that? And l let's be real, okay? Let's just be 100% authentic about this. You see, your persona, who you are on the court, people are watching that, yes, but they also want to see how you act in real life. They want to see your personality besides all of that. They want to see, are you a wholesome person? Are you ratchet? Are you hood? Are you, you know, um, keeping up a certain image that is contrary to what certain brands would want to endorse? Are you a cookie cutter, wholesome image? I thought it was very interesting that the woman, you know, compared Caitlin Clark to Steph Curry when Steph Curry is black. So is it that you guys are upset that she is, that she doesn't look, um, you know, like a certain way? Or is it just the reality of, you know, the other people who are in the same atmosphere are not necessarily uh, a true representatives of what certain people would want to put their brands behind? Based off of, again, not just on the court, but how their personality is on social media. The type of music that they're endorsing on their platforms. Like, let's be real about it. To me, it's so shameful and humiliating that it, this is exemplifying the fact that women do not support other women. They say they do. They say that, oh, you know, it's all about women. We support women. We love other women. Oh, yes, you know, women above men and, you know, women can do no wrong and women are the best thing that's ever happened. They say these things. But when it comes for these same women who complain that they are not getting the support from anybody else to stand behind this person and support them, they have a list of criteria that the person has to meet before they apply their support. 
This reminds me of the same post, I think I mentioned it before, that Little Duval made saying that women don't really like other women and women don't support other women. This is a great example of that. The WNBA is not rank, raking in, you know, the, the, the guy in the first video that I showed, he showed the stands. Not enough people are going to the games. Not enough people are showing the support as, as they are with NBA games. Here you have, you know, college players who are raking in so much support. That those will translate over into the WNBA. Those same supporters are going to want to watch the league and, and want to watch how they transition and go into the game. And you have women who are on the WNBA team. Oh, you know, these girls got a rude uh, awakening, you know, uh, playtime's over. There's levels to this. And if, if you watch the full clip of that conversation, she said, oh, you might be the big dog in college, but when you come over here, it's going to be a whole different story. You can't, you, you're can't. you not going to be the big shot no more. It's either they're good or they're not good. But wouldn't you think, again, where, where there's, there's women in these spaces who are saying that they're not getting the support, that they're not getting the finances, that they're not in spaces that, you know, uh, they're getting, uh, you know, such great grand endorsement deals. Wouldn't you think that they would be, you know, standing there with opening arms saying that this can change, you know, uh, this can be the step up for the league, for, for the future of, you know, the younger girls to come changing the narrative. Wouldn't you think that that's what, that's what they would do? No. Intimidation tactics. They're trying to downplay it. They're trying to act like you're not as good as you are in your game. Where's the support? Another thing I thought was interesting was that the other woman who said that, you know, if you break a record, that you're supposed to break it in the same exact time frame that the other person did. Other, uh, that the other person did. Otherwise, it doesn't seem like you broke any records. Let me tell you something I thought was interesting. I can only go, I'm, I'm going to use music for an example, right? Beyonce has the most Grammys ever. I, I, I believe um, in, uh, I don't know if it's in a certain category or whatever, but I know that she has the most Grammys. Nobody said, oh, it took you this amount of years for you to get that. So technically you didn't break the record. Nobody said that. <laughs> like when records are broken, nobody said, even in the Guinness Book of, uh, Book of World Records, nobody says, oh, you have to do it in this amount of time for it to ma No, you either broke a record or you didn't. And again, it just goes back to trying to downplay, trying to dismiss, trying to minimize. Because as women say that they support other women, we are seen, you know, we are shown time and time again that that is not true. This, this young woman signed a $28 million deal. She's making way more in endorsements with Nike than she is with her um, contract. And to be honest, I have to bring it up again. This all goes down to marketing. Businesses are going to put their money behind somebody who is the face or the forefront and capitalize off of the moment. The marketing has to be really good because, like I said, if it reached me and I don't even watch this stuff... <laughs> And I had to go find out who this girl is. It's obviously working. Because now I'm intrigued. Now I'm like, hold up. Okay, that girl could ball. It wouldn't be, you know, a, a far fetch for me to, you know, her, her game to be announced that she's going to be playing in the WNBA and, and for me to go watch it and actually see how she performs. Because the, the attention is there. With the attention being there, that's where the money flows, the marketing, the eyes, you know, that's what makes sense. And with a lot of women never being satisfied, they're looking with their emotions and their feelings. I don't feel that it should be her. I feel that it should be someone else. I don't feel that this is fair. I feel that this is fair. And that emotion is blocking the logic so they can't even see the big picture.
I'd like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. I would love to hear you guys' opinions on this video. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And I will see you guys in the next one. Love you.